Hello and good evening everyone and welcome to the Race and Social Weekend Preview. It's fairly low-key this week after the hullabaloo of Aintree. So as we're on Aintree, Dawn, talk us through it. Was it good, bad, okay? Well, it was pretty good, wasn't it? It was good. We had a great Thursday. We had a shocker Friday mm -hmm. and then we rolled mightily back, mightily, mightily back. Irish Point. Six to one when I marked him up and what a beautiful, beautiful ride and what a way to go out on a grade one for Davy. And I've had this discussion all week. I thought it would suck less the second time round having to say goodbye to him. It didn't. But to see him have two grade ones at Aintree and to go out like that, that is the right way to send you, our Davy off. Classing the um, first one as a grade one. Jerry Kalam, yeah. <laughs> the beautiful, lovely Jerry Kalam as well. Marked up too. But I mean, my cat outside marked him up. So I can't really claim him. And then Midnight River, we got our airplane. Skeleton Saturday, fantastic. And you and Harry had places at Aintree too. Yeah, we set, so, I had second and third in the national. I mean, you can't complain about that, can you? No, no. Not at and all. and I, I think Korak Rambler, I know I thought he wouldn't be able to do it. I was shut up fairly quick. I thought it was a brilliant performance and I thought he was fantastic. And I think Derek Fox is some man. Definitely. I think looking at next year's, but we'll go into that next season. But I think Vanilla can go very close again next year. But we'll save that for another day, shall we? He'll, ne he he'll never be that price again, though, Joe. You'll never see him at that price again. No, definitely not. So before Punchestown is around the corner, I know you're excited about that, and we have finale there at Sandown. We've got some fairly low-key action, but it is good action. It's jumps nonetheless. We're on the final straight at air. So we're going to look at five races from air, and then I understand you might have some any of the business on that other code, what we call the flat. But... Mm. We're going to start off with the 115 air, two mile handicap chase, grade three dawn. You can have the honours. All me, right. Um, Frere Darms. <laughs> the favourite. The, the favourite. Bridget Andrews is up, Dan Skelton. Um, so we won't be treated to a, a Harry plane in this one, but he's five to do two. He was second, five lengths to Black Jerry. We've seen what Black Jerry did. He won at Plumpton nine days ago. Um, he was beat by Orkin Risk. And Orkin Risk, we've seen, was it three weeks ago? Uh, third to Teddy Blue. You've got John Bomb form in there. You've Boot Hill. He won at Kempton, a two mile two, a handicap chase um, on the soft ahead of Haddock de Obo, who beat Gallop and the Chase, who I quite liked back in January. Um, you've third time lucky form in there for anybody who is still a fan of third time lucky. I just really like this horse. I like what I read about him. Five to two. He's on. He's carrying 11-3. He goes on the good to soft, Joe. So he's decent enough. And then I went down a little bit because I want value as well. You know, I always look for a little bit of an each way play. I like Baron de Middleton. Uh, Brian Allison, he always pulls something out. The jockey's taken five off. He's carrying 11-1. Um, he beat Tommy's Oscar at Carlisle on March 19th. He was second to remastered. Yes, it was back in 2020, but remastered has been really good this season. And he was second to Bold Endeavour, and Bold Endeavour was second yesterday at Cheltenham with Nico. So uh, that was in a novice chase at Donny. So I think at him, he's a bit more value. And Brian Ellison always pulls something out of the bag. And I think with the jockey taking off five, He's value at 11 to 1. But I think my winner here is Frere Darms. I didn't have time to Google what it means because I like to know what these names mean that I'm talking about. Uh, like anything that I put in my mouth. But there you go. I didn't. And return ticket is in here at 8 to 1. So, you know, he won it last year. I don't fancy him I could end up with return tickets on my face so I'm going with the favourites and an each way play with Baron de Middleton Yeah I can see why that is the favourite but I like pay the price right now. Nine, only nine days since he last ran that was the entry he ran a cracker to be fair he was fifth 
and that uh, handicap chase behind dancing on my own. Um, if he's over that, he should be up to winning a race like this. He takes his racing very well, so I'm pretty confident that it won't leave his mark. His last win was off 136. He's 142 here, so it does demand like maybe a career best. Brian Hughes is actually on board instead of Danny McManimum. He normally rides, but he's on Malistic for Peter Niven. So I don't sure what the arrangement is there, but champion jockey on, you're not gonna you're not gonna grumble at that. The last time Brian Hughes rode him, incidentally, he was second to one of yours, Midnight River. And he was only beaten a neck in that race, and he was given the Midnight River eight pounds. So the form isn't bad there if you took it literally. So pay the pipe piper for me at six to one. I mean. Anne Hamilton, she campaigns her horse. She's very good. How many horses has she got? She only got about six, hasn't she? Something like that. It's six. It's very small, but they're, they're, they're good ones, Joe. And um, what you saying about Midnight uh, River there too, if you want to go back a little bit further. Yeah, okay. He he. Midnight River was ninth, I think, to seven at Cheltenham or there thereabouts. So you've got all that kind of yeah. lining up as well. I think on, on his day, probably probably... He, he, Nice, consistent horse. So six to one is fair enough price to not think it will go close. So the move on now to the 150, which is a three-mile handicap chase. We've got Nicky Henderson or City Chiefs, the favourite here, and he is all the rage looking at this. And he's, is he your idea of the winner? He is, but I, again, look, I look for value. And OK, I make a case for City Chief, and it's the lovely yellow and black Donnelly colours. So I don't know, I, I, I have a feeling you'll go in that direction. But um, yeah, he he even, he's a half brother actually. You know, I'm going to throw this into Premier Package. Premier Package has a bit of form to Sam Crow on the point of points. But what I like about City Chief is he won 75 days ago. He bet O'Toole. O'Toole has killed Krupp form in him. Um, he beat Coconut Splash, who I'm quite fond of. He was second to Jolino Bello. You know, Jolino Bello, he's a there or thereabouts horse. I quite like him. 29 lengths, he bet him that day. Yeah, it was only a two-horse race, but sure hell, a win is a win. Um, fifth at the Punchestown Festival last year. Hmm. Really liked him there. Really liked him at Punchestown. I went down a little bit. Not a lot of value, but a bit. Nine to two. Harry Cobden's up, and the way he's riding, you'd kind of watch him wherever he goes. For Joe Tizard, Oscar Elite. Fifth to Korak Rambler in the Ultima this year, third last year in the Ultima. And again, he beat Bold Endeavour at Ascot in February. So you've got that Bold Endeavour uh, form there again. Yeah, I can see that with Oscar Elite. I think he was second a few years ago to Benillier in the Albert Bartlett. And it was yeah. only the other day we were talking about the Bartlett. The form doesn't seem to, it doesn't take some a while to get back to that type of form, doesn't it? And Benillier, I've showed that the other day. Um, you're right about City Chief. I just think you can't oppose him. I can't oppose him anyway. Two and three is a chaser. The only worry as a chaser, he's running a two runner, three runner, and a four runner field. Um, will he cope the hustle bustle of a, of a bigger field? His jumping sometimes isn't the best. He can, he has been known to jump like a bit of a fridge, but um, if his jumping holds up, I mean, nine to four, tad short, but that is a worry. But ability wise, he's, he's clear. A long way clear of this lot, and I can just see Nico nursing him around and um, picking him up late on. So yeah, City Chief. It's not very original, nine to four, but it will do for me. Winner of the winner, as you say. Two twenty-five now. Dawn, the Scottish Champion Hurdle Handicap Grade Two. Um, I've got quite a strong fancy in this. If you don't mind, I want to set us off, and that is a uh, Nimian Lion. Knew it, <laughs> like last time. Last time he's a Golden Horn as well so I know you'd like that bit of information um, third in the Tolworth ground as I said last time I tipped it was not his liking I tipped him up at Calso in the grade two um, mistake at the last he proper bunny up to it he still managed to regain his composure and win by a couple of lengths he won slightly cosier than in the uh, handicap I think ground's key with him I think this is definitely his bag he's an improving sort by Golden Horn like I just said eight to one it's fantastic value. And for me, that is obviously, it's better the day for me, eight to one, Nimi and Lion. One to look out for if you want a bit more value is Highway 102. Um, his last three runs have been like third in the Christmas hurdle, seventh in the Betfair and sixth in the county. And the race before Campton was victory and Ascot handicap. So he's been running at the top level. Um, his run in the county on soft ground was superb considering he doesn't enjoy that type of ground. He loves to be prominent. 
he'll always give you a run for his money and he's dangerous. If he gets a soft lead, he might be able to dictate this and he could definitely sneak a bit of value at um, a big price. But it's all about Nimi and Lyon for me, Dawn. Um, how do you see it going? Well, I did have Nimi and Lyon down. I had him because I kicked myself last time. Uh, I I didn't look at him when you had said, and he was your, I think he was your bed of the day that day too. Was, yeah, I'm nearly sure. Yeah, yeah. And like, he's 10, 11. What I like is the bit of flat form back along. I scrape back to that. He was with Andrew Farb. I know Kerry Lee thinks a lot of him. I'm a little bit disappointed that he's not going to punch his town. Yeah. I think he's definitely probably not going to punch his town because I was really looking forward to him. Um, Anna Benina won it last year. She was second the year before. Milkwood's in here too. He won it the year before last and he was fifth last year. What I like about Anna Benina is, OK, we've got the John McConnell factor. And John McConnell is on fire at the moment, as is the jockey he has up. He's got Ben Harvey up. He's taken five off. We've seen what Ben did at Cheltenham. We've seen what he'd done at Aintree. If he's going to do it, let him do it at air as well. Um, ninth in the county. And we've seen what's come out of the county as well. Um, second to Queen's Brook. And what I liked that day, Anna Benina, she came back and uh, Queen's Brook was then third in the honeysuckle race, as I say. Um, six to Maryland Giant, I mentioned him all season. Asperti, Wrexham, Dad's Lad. Asperti, I'm going back to Champ Kylie again. You see how rock solid that is. And was nine to Tudor City in a Galway hurdle. I just think at eight to one, John McConn, Ben taking five off. He's good. Robad, I looked at. He broke my heart when he bet Mullen Beg. Remember, I did the 20-minute monologue about her. And Colonel Mustard, good old Colonel Mustard, I wouldn't begrudge him finally having his day. You've got, he was third to state man, don't, uh, in the county. <laughs> the year before last, he's been second to John Bond. He's been second to Benson at Kelso back in March. Uh, Duck takes three off. I'd love to see him at five to one, but... For me, I see where you're going with the main line. I'll probably say to you afterwards, you were so right. I should have listened. But I'm going to stick with Anna Benina at eight to one. Yeah, definitely. I can, I can see that angle as well. Talking of the state man, is he going punch down for that egg and spoon race? There is no egg and spoon race. There is no egg and spoon race. He will face off Vauban, Epitant, Pied Piper. So, you know, I'm in chestnut heaven there, Joe. Three o'clock air, um, two mile four, novice chase, grade two. This is probably the worst race in the card for me. Um, how do you, some of the form just doesn't stack up, um, sand down, et cetera. But who do you fancy in this? Well, <laughs> I split it three ways because I, I could go Irish or I could stay English. Um, I'll go with my Irish first and what what is telling me something. Tell me something, girl. Um, she's got 10-9 up, Rachel's up. Henry's horses are really in form at the moment. They're really coming into themselves. She was second to Brides Hill. With Brides Hill, you've got Party Central form. I'll talk about Party Central at the end. Um, you've got Allegory de Vassi. You've got Instant in there, and Instant now has swapped and has beaten Allegory de Vassi. We've seen that two weeks ago. And she won the Mayor's Novice Hurdle at Cheltenham in 2021. I loved her at Nace when she bet Instas. I liked the way she came back. The two Mayors that day made a bit of a muddle. But with 10-9, Rachel's riding out of her skin. Henry is on fire, which is great to see. That's all right, Gino. You'd love to see him do it for Jamie. Um, pulled up in the plate but again I talk about Seddon's race like I, I had said earlier um, because Midnight River came out of that plate Jev Ray was fourth and okay that's all right Gino pulled up but still it's Seddon's race um, second to Solo in February there's a bit of Boot Hill form in there love a bit of Boot Hill he beat Calico who people talk about with John Bond I don't, but still, I'm making a case. And second to Stage Star. 
So that 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 that's what makes me excited there. And again, Gino Bello was in there, albeit back in 2020. I'll be quick with Balco Coastal. He was seventh to stage star in the Turners, and he was second to Jerry Colon. But I think, and I'm gonna be going with the Irish again. Tell me something, girl, because of all those really good mares thrown in there and with the way Henry's horses are running now. Yeah, definitely. You mentioned that's right, Gina, there. And I, I don't like going against Jamie's horses, especially the, the form they're in. I can never catch them right. I go against them and they always win. Um, <laughs> but do any of these, do any of these like, like winning? I mean, hang in there is obviously very consistent. I think he's won three of, yeah, he's won five of his last six. But is he up to this level? Probably not. He is interested in back and better ground, that's for sure. But the one I like is Thunder Rock, Ollie Murphy and Adrian Heskin. Um, in the dipper at Cheltenham, he, he ran OK. Sandbound again, he was third behind Jerry Colom and Balco. Um, again, it was OK. It was a suitable ground. Um, he was sixth in the brown advisory. Again, soft going, doesn't suit him. I prefer him to Balco. Um, who was seventh in the Turners, like you said, when last seen. I just think he's got a bit more scope for improvement on this ground. And it's that time of year where the ground is changing daily. I think it's going to be dry all the time for a Saturday. And out there, main contenders, I think it's going to suit some th th Thunder Rock more than the others. So 11 to 2, fair enough price. I know he's 11 to 2, Balco Costa 9 to 4. I know where the value is, in my opinion. That's uh, Thunder Rock. The day's main event now, Dawn, the Scottish Grand National. Um, grade three, four miles, always a brilliant race. One of your old flames is here. I'm not going back. I just can't. I've made a bed. I'm going to lie in it. But I presume it is light. Is uh, your idea the winner? Well, yes and no. Yes and no. I mean, the the dry spell with him just worries me. As in, is he going to be back in the mood to 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 go and put up a performance that he did ahead of your? galloping bear you know um that was some performance that day and i was only delighted for the horse second last year to the stable mate my wings uh win my wings and do you know he only costs five grand as a yearling so i mean like what what, what a bargain um and third to uick again you've got that bit of remastered form in there too and i do like following remastered uh, he's very tight for a Scottish national, Joe, for me at nine to two. I mean, Jack knows him and knows him well, and he knows to, to cheer you. It's just if he's in the mood. Melina Girl, 12 to one, um, won 18 days ago to Munster National, had been second and had been third again, Allegory de Vassi, um, beat Optimal Mix, who was second to Jevre. And we've seen what Jeff Ray has done in the Irish National. So you have a nice bit of that up. Um, Sean Flanagan's up. And he get, I thought he gave Vanillier a super ride last week in the National. And then a horse that caught my eye at 33 to 1, half shot, Ian Jardin. Uh, Conor O'Farrell is up. Last win at Musselburgh um, on the good, good to soft. Um, he's by Yates. And again, you know me about the Yates is that they grind and they come and it'll be his type of ground. He's third to Manila Drama, uh, New Year's Day at Musselburgh. He was second to Bill Baxter, who was a lovely winner, an absolutely lovely winner for Warren Gatrix. And it was just beautiful to see the luck changing finally. And second behind um, Elvis Mail. Now, I know Elvis Mail is in this too. Um, he's 14 to 1. That was 26 days ago at Kell. So, so Bill Baxter, Elvis Mail form, Melilla Drama form. At He's only carrying 10 to, and he's 33 to 1. Ian Jardin, again, I say like with, with Ellison, they, they pull it out of the bag. I think at a good each way play, that will happen. Melina girl, I'm going to take. Kitty's light. I'll only be happy for him if he does do it. But I'm going to, I, 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 I'm hoping he'll win. Am I going to put my house on him? No, I'm not. Um, Melina girl, I think will be there or thereabouts. And in a good each way play, have a couple of half shots, have half shots. Yeah, I think you're right about Kitty's light. 
I think the last time he won back-to-back races was 2020. So you can't fully trust that he's going to back it up, even though he probably is well handicapped on last year's race and the form he's in now. Um, I can't go back. You just you just think he's going to he'll do his finishing kick again, but a lot of time, even before he's winning, he's always too late. So it's always a concern in a race like this. I had Dusar as one of my five to follow at the start of the year, and I don't know how he's been campaigned with the injuries or what, but I thought he was an ideal candidate for the, um, it's called the Labyrinth now, isn't it, at Newbury. But, and then he started at Cheltenham over hurdles, and I was just like, don't know what's going on here then. And then he went to the Cotswold chase and pulled up, and it's just been a bit of a mess really. But all is forgiven if he rocks a beer, wins at 16 to 1. So, um, yeah, top weight. He's been given no slap by the handicapper at all after two poor runs, but he won't go into the handicap wrongdoings. Uh, it's a bit late in the season for that. Um, as I said, last season the Cotswold Chase pulled up. He won on this card last year, if you remember. He won the Novice Chase. He actually beat Sound Russian, who, who's had a pretty good season himself. He's been running at the top level. Um, he could be pretty unexposed over this trip. Four miles. He's jumping to suffer a bit. They'll be going that bit slower. I just do think it Top weight is a worry, looking at the stats and the history of the race, but if anyone could do it, it's Nico and Nicky Anderson at the end of the day. So, yeah, he'd be my um, idea of the winner. One I did look at, but I'm a bit... It's one of them, under supervision. He's won 11 as a chaser. He look, Again, he looks the type to relish this kind of test. He was a grim thought winner in 2022. He's second in the race this year. He's just got all the hallmarks of a, a proper boat if you so to speak, and these four-mile boats. But he is interested at a bigger price. But, yeah, it's all about Dusart for me. He's the class act in the field, and I do think he can run a big race off top weight. Um, anything else at Air Dawn or any other business I'm done for the day, so to speak? I assume you've got other stuff on the flat, have you, for us? I thought you were going to go to Plumpton or something. I'm disappointed there wasn't anything called out there. Saving, saving myself a punch of stone and sand down. Um, yeah, uh, firstly, Party Central, my five to follow, finally turned up, my girl, and she went back to the rescheduled Garen, on your favourite word, the flat, she won her maiden. Can I just um, put in there, the five to follow was five to follow jumps, so you can't claim a flat. But we're still in the National Hunt season, so technically, and she's going back to the jumps in a couple of weeks. She's going for the listed hurdle at Killarney. So I next mean, season, though. It te- how is that <laughs> technically next season? They were still in. No, I'm claiming her, and that's it. Anyway, a win is a win, and she won, and I'm delighted. So she's maybe won for the summer jumps now, like a couple of the eight snares, you know. Um. Okay. Today. It was the Craven, three days of Craven. And uh, we all had a morgasm today as Ryan Moore provided three winners. So Navin on Saturday, it's the vintage crop, true up Kiprius last year. And we all know what Kiprius went on to do all season. I see your eyes glazing over. Um, <laughs> Emily Dickinson. The famous poet, hope is a thing with feathers. Aidan O'Brien has already said, because Kiprius has had a setback, she will be his aim for the Gold Cup at the Royal Ascot this year. So she'll probably, i hoping she'll win or she'll show us what she's made of. J'adore more, Ryan is up. Um, then we've got Jackie O. She was so, so good. So well related. Seen her in the Phillies Maiden at Nace um, 25 days ago. She bet Red Riding Hood. Red Riding Hood had a bit of a nightmare, so to speak, on a very windy day at Dundalk, but won all the same. So her form is standing up. And um, the Antarctic is back out to play. Again, Ryan Moore is up. This is where I'm going with my treble morgasm. Um, Blackbeard form is standing up. It's rock solid. Marshman won France the other day. Marshman has been placed to Blackbeard. So the Antarctic, Emily Dickinson and Jackie O for me. A nice morgasm. Three horses at Navin on Saturday on the flat. Okay. And after that, your attention turns to Punchdown where we will be doing some written previews. I understand you're there, Dawn. Give us three horses you're most looking forward to seeing. Ooh. Galloping the Champ, 
Energimine and State Man. Cannot wait to see any of them. They're, they're just, I mean, there's so many more. I could, we'd be here another 10 minutes, but um, yeah, I'd Fabiolo. be there. Who? Al oh, Fabiolo's out, isn't he? Oh yeah, Jesus. Well, I mean, you can't be, that. you only gave me three. So if you want me to squeeze in 10, I can do that. And I know a few people are saying, basically it's only public appearances. No, a good horse is a good horse. And you turn up, like I said about Con Hill, if he was going to the moon tomorrow, I'd like to turn up and see him, you know, that way. So quality over quantity. It's been a long old season. It's been hard, but it's been, in the words of my great late grandfather, bloody marvellous. So, I mean, Punchestown is going to be super either way. And I know Sandown as well is always class. It's 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 on the bucket list. Well, like I said, we've got written previews of Punchestown, then we're going to be back with a Sandown preview. I'm at Sandown, you're at Punchestown. So... Hopefully there'll be plenty of content and plenty of winners coming both our ways before the national hunt season heads off to the sunset. But we have some summer jumps and stuff to keep us occupied, understand. So yeah, always not lost. Always not- Central. <laughs> Country Queen. Country Queen. Champ Kylie. <laughs> so Dawn, good to see you again. And um, I look forward to seeing your content for Punchestown. And everyone, thanks for watching. All the best at the weekend. And uh, we'll see you next week. <laughs>